Okay, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, first of all, thanks for the invitation, for the opportunity to speak here. Um, so I will talk about a um, subject that is part of a already published paper with Matthias, but also I will tell you about some uh, results that is part of, um, of an ongoing project with Matthias and Fernando. Is that, is that normal? Yeah, okay. With uh, Fernando Studzinski um, from the University of Sao Paulo. Okay. Um, so let me start with a short motivation. So the motivation that we have, or one of the motivations, comes from the study of singular spaces, the geometry of singular spaces. So we want to understand singular spaces or singular quotients of smooth manifolds. And here by a singular quotient of a smooth manifold, I mean the orbit space of a Lie groupoid. So here we mean the orbit space of a Lie groupoid. Okay. So I think uh, in, during the school, Matthias talked about read equivalence, and so probably uh, you mentioned the idea of a differentiable stack, uh, but I will uh, shortly recall this uh, concept here. So I am interested in the transversal geometry of a Lie groupoid. G. So uh, by the transversal geometry, I mean three ingredients, three objects. So the first one is the orbit space. Which in general is denoted by M modulo G. So this guy is the topological space, which in general is singular. And uh, the second ingredient is given by the isotropy groups. So we have isotropy groups associated to any object of the groupoid. And these isotropy groups appear as symmetries of some uh, vector spaces called the normal directions to the orbits. So we also have normal representations. Which are representations of the isotropy groups on the normal direction to an orbit. Okay, so I will denote this uh, data orbit space together with the isotropy representations. I will denote this by M modulo G with this bracket here. Okay, and the main observation that one can do is um, is that the transversal data is functorial. So the first remark is that this guy is functorial. And we would like to identify Lie groupoids having isomorphic transversal data, right? 
So for that, let me mention a result um, of Matthias. Um, So the result says the following. So if you start with the morphism of the groupoids, phi, so this guy uh, yields nice morphism of or between transversal data, nice morphism, let me write this like between transversal data, if and only if this morphism is a Morita map. Okay, so now we can think of uh, the isomorphism class of uh, transversal data for groupoid as the Morita equivalence class of that groupoid. So, and this is precisely what uh, is known in the literature. So I will write here a well-known correspondence between the groupoids up to Morita equivalence. and differentiable stacks up to isomorphism. So uh, the, the stack associated to a group where is defined in terms of principal G bundles, but here we have a geometric picture for the stack associated to a group with. You can think of the stack associated to G as the orbit space together with this bunch of information along the transversals, okay? So the idea now is that we would like to study objects or properties which are Morita invariant, and then we will have induced objects or properties at the level of the of stacks, okay? So the main goal is finding Morita invariant objects and what we will see today is, is that we can um, describe two interesting Morita invariant objects in terms of representation theory of groupoids. Invariants out of representations, but the notion of representation that we will deal with is the, the notion of a representation up to homotopy. Okay, so um, let me. Um, let me uh, give two examples of Morita invariants. So, um, examples. So let us start with the um, morphism between two groupoids. So given. Morphism between groupoids, which is also a Morita map. A Morita map. One has the following. So first, we can use this Morita map to construct a functor between the categories of representations. So we will have a functor relating the category of representations of the groupoid H with the category of representations of the groupoid G, 
This is just given by taking the pullback of representations, and since this map is a Morita map, this functor is an equivalence. So we have an equivalence of categories. So that means that the category of representations of a group with is a Morita invariant. And the second uh, example is the following. So if you fix a representation of H and you consider its pullback representation, so then we can talk about uh, cohomology with coefficients in a representation and it turns out that the cohomology of the groupoid G with values in the pullback representation is isomorphic to the cohomology of H with coefficients in the representation E. Right. So, um, as far as I know, this is a, a result of Marius Krajnik. So uh, this means that the, the cohomology with coefficients in a representation is also a Morita invariant. Okay. So let me uh, give an interpretation of these two Morita invariants in a concrete example. And here we will see that both statements are very geometric. So. Uh, What I will do now is to consider an explicit Morita map between two groupoids where this groupoid is associated to a surjective submersion and this groupoid will be the unit groupoid of the base of that submersion. So, so a sub example. So suppose that we have a subjective submersion. <laughs> then we can construct the submersion groupoid, which is a groupoid over M. And this guy comes with a Morita map with values in this unit groupoid. And here we take pi may be composed with the first projection. So this is a Morita map. So we are in that setting. And in this case, um, the first equivalence says that the category of representations of this group weight which is just the category of vector bundles over N is equivalent to the category of representations of the submersion groupoid. So this means that uh, representations of this guy are just vector bundles over this quotient manifold. So here we are in the, in the setting of, I, I should say said this before, but if you think of N as a quotient of M, then we have a smooth quotient, and in this case, vector bundles over this smooth quotient are given by representations of these submersion group points. So this is a statement about quotient vector bundles. Okay? So regarding the second observation here, so let's start with a representation of the unit groupoid. So this is just a vector bundle. So I will take the cotangent bundle. Then 
we can look at now its pullback representation, which is just the conormal representation of the submersion groupoid. And in this case, we have an isomorphism between cohomologies. isomorphism and it's easy to see that this cohomology is actually given by uh, one forms on the base manifold right so you can do the same for um, exterior powers of this representation and then you will find a relation between this cohomology with let's say q forms on the base right so this statement about cohomology is just a statement about differential forms on the basis of a submersion. Okay. The point is that for general groupoids, the situation is uh, more complicated. The degree is zero cohomology. Yes. Yeah. It's the degree zero of this one. Yeah. So for general groupoids, we have a more complicated picture. In general. The normal directions. Do not give a vector bundle, so uh, do not give a vector bundle. As in the submersion case, however, one can understand these uh, normal directions in terms of a two-term complex of vector bundles. two-term complex A to Tm given by the anchor map of the Lie algebra of the groupoid is always well defined. It's always well defined. And um, this complex comes with a different type of symmetries, which are symmetries up to homotopies. And this complex comes with a representation up to homotopy. Which is the adjoint representation of the group one. Okay, so now the idea is that we are going to replace this normal direction by this two term complex and uh, this, um, and we would like to relate cohomologies. Uh, with coefficients in representations, but now we want to, we need to deal with cohomologies with coefficients in representations up to homotopies. Okay, so in the second part of the talk, I'm going to talk about representations up to homotopy. Okay, so um, this notion was introduced by Camilo Arias and Marius Krynik, and also uh, a special case of representations up to homotopy on uh, graded bundles with two terms were also studied by Raj Mehta and Alfonso Gracia Sass.
and the definition is the following. So we start with a groupoid. I will fix groupoid G. And we will consider E, curly E, a graded vector bundle. Graded vector bundle. over M, over the, the unit space of the groupoid. And here, I'm going to define a module. So this is the first ingredient. The second ingredient is the following. So here we use um, the usual uh, func um, co-chains, groupoid co-chains with values in this vector bundle, and we combine this to find this object. And it turns out that uh, this guy is a module over the groupoid algebra. And the representation up to homotopy is given by a degree one operator on that CG module, which is squares to zero. A representation up to homotopy of G on E is a degree one derivation D which is squares to zero. So um, at this point, we can associate two objects. So we have two important objects. So maybe we'll write here. First one is the category of representations up to homotopy. So usually it's denoted by this, red infinity G. So this is the category of representations up to homotopy of G. And the second one is if you fix the representation up to homotopy, Because we have this operator which is squares to zero, we have a natural cohomology with coefficients in E. So it's cohomology of G with coefficients in E. Okay? So just as for usual representations. And the question that I would like to partially addressed today is the Morita invariance of those objects. The main question. Okay. 
<clears throat> and we will see that uh, the answer regarding the category of representation, the answer is no in general. Um, the answer is not Morita invariant. I mean, here I'm always considering uh, non-trivial representations up to how many. No, they are not, of course, this is true for usual representations. Okay, but it's not more written very in general. And regarding the cohomology, we will see that the answer is yes. Okay, so in order to better understand this problem, I will focus on a very special case of representations of homotopy, Paul. The maps, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, the maps are uh, module maps, CG linear maps, which commute with the differentials. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so let me understand this problem in the case of representations up to homotopy of length two. So we will consider only graded bundles with two building blocks. are called two-term representations of the homotopy. So here, our graded bundle E has, is given by two vector bundles that I'm going to denote by C and E, All right, so uh, the the connection with, um, with one of the talks in the morning is that this guy is the core of a VB groupoid and this guy is the side of a VB groupoid. Okay, so um, having, so I already erased this, but having a representation up to homotopy like this is equivalent to the following information. So, growth uh, on E amounts to uh, first, having a vector bundle map between these two vector bundles. So we will think of this vector bundle map as a two-term complex of vector bundles over M, together with an action, with a quasi-action. Quasi-action by chain maps. So this means that any arrow of G gives you a chain map between the complex over the source and the, tar the, the complex over the target. So we have chain maps. Um, there is a relation between acting by multiplication and the composition of the actions, which is given by the following. Together we have a chain homotopy K um, G1, G2, 
from this chain map to the composition for, for every composable pair of arrows. And this map here, this homotopy, satisfy uh, some higher coherence equations, which is not very important now. But, uh, so this is what it is. And the construction done by uh, Gracia Sass and Raj Mehta says that we can understand such an object in a more geometric way. So given such a representation of the homotopy, one can construct a groupoid in the category of vector bundles. So, so this is a vector bundle over G, but also uh, one can define a groupoid structure on this guy with unit, unit space E, and this is an example of a VB groupoid over G. VB groupoid over G with core C and side E. And you can also go from VB groupoids to representations of homotopy by choosing a splitting of the core sequence of a VB groupoid. The point is that um, this construction is functorial, and actually what we have is an equivalence of categories between two term representations of G, two terms representations of the homotopy of G and VB group with over G. So that construction is functorial and actually gives an equivalence of categories between two-term representations and VB groupoids. So um, the, the bijection at the level of objects was appeared first in, the pap in a paper by Alfonso and Raj, and what we did with Matthias was uh, checking that actually this construction is functorial. Okay, so we really have an equivalence of categories. So now all the problems or questions that we have about representations of the homotopy will be uh, studied on this side of the picture. Okay, so we are going to replace this cohomological object which can be described alternatively in terms of quasi-actions with some compatibilities we are going to replace all that but uh, just by a vector bundle in the category of groupoids, okay? Great. Okay, so remember that question one is, is this category a Morit invariant? And question two is, whenever you fix a two-term representation up to homotopy, look at the cohomology and you will like to decide if the cohomology is Morit invariant or not. So now, the quest those questions means, is this category a Morit invariant? And we will see that in order to understand the question about the cohomology, we can also uh, rephrase that question in terms of a cohomology theory associated to a VB groupoid, okay? So for that, I need a definition. Okay, so the conclusion here uh, 
that we will work with VB groupoids instead of working with representations of homotopy. And in order to understand Morita invariance, we need a, a, a good notion of Morita map between VB groupoids. So let me explain that. So suppose that we have two VB groupoids, one over G and gamma prime over G prime, together with a morphism of, morphism of VB groupoids. So I'm going to call this phi and this phi. So this is a VB groupoid morphism. So this guy will be called a VB Morita map. VB Morita. If the map psi uh, phi as a map of Lie groupoids is a Morita map. So this is uh, the notion of Morita maps in the world of VB groupoids. <coughs> and one can see that um, if you start, so remark, if you start with um, morphism of Lie groupoids, which is a Morita map. I mean, actually, uh, whenever you have a morphism of groupoids, you can uh, construct a pullback map between VB groupoids. So you have a pullback map between VB groupoids. And the main re remark is that if this map is a Morita map, then this pullback is not necessarily an equivalence of categories. Okay, so um, in our paper with Matthias, we, we have a, a, an explicit counterexample, so, um, which is essentially given by um, taking a Morita map between the per groupoid associated to the circle. So uh, there is a Morita map to a unit groupoid associated to a point. And then, so if this map is phi, then um, VB groupoids over this guy are always trivial. So if you take, for instance, here, vector bundle given by the Mebus strip, and you look at the per groupoid, this guy is a VB groupoid over this one, which is not isomorphic to a pullback. Okay, so this map here is not essentially surjective. Okay? And we also show an example where this map is not necessarily fully faithful. So the conclusion is that the category of VB groupoids is not a Morita invariant, but uh, this means that we need to look at, at this question more carefully. And the first theorem that we have with Matthias Yes, I think I think I think so. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that is an interpretation for that. Yeah. 
Okay, so let me state the theorem. And the theorem says that if you have a Morita map, and we look at the pullback map, well, write this differently, I will put some brackets here. So this is a new category with the same objects. Objects are VB groupoids. Let's say here objects are VB groupoids over H. However, morphisms are isomorphism classes of VB Morita map. Okay, so this is a new category. And it turns out that pullback by Morita maps gives an equivalence of categories between these um, derived categories. Just to so objects in VBG are VB groupoids over G, and morphisms are isomorphism classes of VB Morita maps. Okay, so the, the, the usual category of VB group which is not Morita invariant, but this derived category of VB group which is Morita invariant, okay? <coughs> so in particular, um, one has a, a corollary it's a corollary says that if phi is a Morita map, then if we look at representations up to homotopy of two terms of the group with H, modulo quasi-isomorphisms, so it, this is the derived category of representations up to homotopy, then the pullback is an equivalence. Okay, so the category of two term representations of the homotopy is not a Morita invariant, but its derived category is a Morita invariant, okay? So regarding the cohomology, I think I have 15 minutes maybe. Regarding the cohomology, bit more? Okay. About cohomology. Um. I will give you the, 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 the idea of the, of the construction. So if you start with a VB groupoid over G. You can associate, of course, a complex, which is the groupoid complex, groupoid co-chains, right? But we will associate another complex, which are groupoid co-chains in gamma, which are fiber-wise linear. So, so here, fiber-wise linear means that, um, so remember that gamma is a vector bundle over G. So if you apply the nerve functor, you will have here other components, which are vector bundles as well. And because groupoid co-chains are functions, real valid functions on this total space, and we require these guys to be linear with respect to this bundle structure. So. Uh, one can check that this is a subcomplex of the groupoid complex. And um, there is a subcomplex in here, which is called the VB complex. The VB complex, which are linear 
coachings with an additional structure, which are um, called projectable linear um, coachings. But the point is that this complex here, if gamma is, as is associated to a two-term representation up to homotopy, this complex here computes precisely the cohomology with coefficients in that representation. Okay, so if gamma, say, comes from E, then uh, result also by uh, Gracia, Sass, and Meta says that the cohomology of G with coefficients <coughs> in the dual representation is isomorphic to the VB cohomology of gamma E. And here I think we need to put a shift. But essentially the idea is that uh, this subcomplex here computes the cohomology with coefficients in that representation. And um, I result by Alejandro Cabrera and Tiago Drummond says that actually this inclusion here is a quasi-isomorphism. And what we showed with Matthias is that a VB Morita map between VB groupoids induces an isomorphism between linear cohomology. So then by, by combining all this um, information here, we conclude that um, the cohomology of a groupoid with coefficients in a representation of homotopy of length two is Morita invariant, okay? So I will write that now. Position is that if one has a VB Morita map, then it induces an isomorphism between VB cohomologies. And since this VB cohomology computes the cohomology with coefficients in a two-term representations, we have Morita invariant, invariance for those cohomologies. Okay. Um, let me give a geometric interpretation of this two result that we have. So Morita invariance of the of VB groupoids and Morita invariance of cohomology. So in our work with Matthias, comments. So we use this category, this derived category of VB groupoids to um, propose a notion of a two vector bundle over a differentiable stacks. vector bundles over differentiable stacks. And for instance, if you look at the cohomology of G with coefficients in the adjoint representation up to homotopy, uh, one can show that this cohomology is Morita invariant, and in particular, um, since this cohomology computes the formations of a Lie groupoid, one has that uh, two groupoids which are Morita equivalent, they have uh, same deformation theory. So this is related to deformation theory, formations of groupoids, which is the work of uh, Joan, Ivan, and Marius. Um, but also, uh, one can compute at least, let's say, the degree one 
cohomology, which is given by multiplicative vector fields modulo inner vector fields on a groupoid. And in another work with, uh, in collaboration with James Waldron, we gave an interpretation of this uh, cohomology groups as vector fields on a differentiable stack. Okay, so um, these two objects associated to two-term representations of homotopy are interesting. So on the one hand side, we can talk about some sort of higher vector bundles. And on the other side, some cohomologies give you information geometric information about geometric structures on the differentiable stack associated to a groupoid. So in the last 10 minutes, I will uh, explain to you uh, the main idea of how, how, how the general case uh, works, okay? What I explained so far is, 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 is what we did with Matthias in a, a previous work. And uh, from this point to the end of the talk, I will uh, show you the results that we have with Matthias and Fernando. Okay, so this is uh, given by M term representations of homotopy. So what is the idea here? Um, the idea is that uh, if you want to understand a, a geometric object associated to an n-term representation of homotopy, we need to go to, to, this, to, to the world of higher groupoids. So we are going to deal with higher Lie groupoids. So the, main, the, the first ingredient that appear here is that we need to talk about Lie and groupoids. Right? And if you start with a representation up to homotopy, write rep and g. I don't know if this is the best notation, but this means that this is a, a representation up to homotopy of length n. Um, The result that is uh, a work that is already in, in, in progress, still in progress with uh, work by Matthias and Giorgio Trentinaglia. And they show that the analog of a VB groupoid in this case is a simplicial vector bundle over the nerve of G, so this is the nerve of G, and this guy is a simplicial vector bundle. But since our representations are bounded, it, they have length n, this guy is not only a simplicial manifold, but also a Lie n groupoid, or a Lie n minus one groupoid. Right? So, for instance, in the case of a VB groupoid, this thing here is just the nerve of the total space of the VB groupoid. Okay? And then you have a simplicial vector bundle over the nerve. So now, in order to uh, mimic our, uh, our solutions to, to, to the first problem, we need to understand what are the analogs of Morita maps in the, in the world of Li and groupoids? And here, VB Morita maps, VB Morita maps are replaced by 
some maps between simplicial vector bundles, which are called hypercovers, linear hypercovers. So uh, hypercovers are the, the higher version of Morita maps. And since we want to understand the higher version of VB Morita maps, we require that linearity for these hypercovers. And the proposition is that associated to any simplicial vector bundle like this, one can talk about its linear cohomology. Okay, it's linear cohomology, and this linear cohomology is invariant by linear hypercovers. Okay, and the final ingredient is that there is also a version of uh, the VB complex in this setting. So there is a complex so we call, we call this complex projectable which sits inside the linear complex of V. And it turns out that this complex computes the cohomology of G with values in a representation up to homotopy. But also this inclusion here is a quasi-isomorphism. And again, Combining all this information, so Morita invariance of the linear cohomology with this quasi-isomorphism and the fact that this complex computes the cohomology with coefficients in the representation, we have Morita invariance for the cohomology. So, um, is that um, G, if that is in E, is Morita invariant. Okay. Um, I don't have much time, but just to show you uh, some consequences of of this of this result, um, one can check now. So some cor corollary that if we start with two representations up to homotopy of G, which are quasi-isomorphic, then the cohomology of G with coefficients in E is isomorphic to the cohomology of G with coefficients in E prime. And uh, using this and doing some computations, for instance, one can check that if you compute the cohomology of a submersion groupoid with coefficients and symmetric powers of the coadjoint representation, so. Um, the coadjoint representation is a two-term representation up to homotopy. So now you take symmetric powers. This thing is a representation of up to homotopy of with, with more terms. So you can compute this cohomology by using the written variance. And you can see that actually um, this uh, cohomology is isomorphic, it is concentrated in on only one degree, which corresponds to <coughs> Q forms on the base of the submersion. So um, there is something that I, I, I don't understand yet, but um, I would like to r relate 
replace this submersion groupoid by any groupoid. And then I would like to use this cohomology with coefficients in this special representation up to homotopy as a model to study differential forms on the quotient stack of a groupoid. But this is something that I, I, I need to understand more carefully. Uh, it remains also to understand more the invariance of the category of representations up to homotopy. That is something that we don't know yet, but we expect that it should be true. I mean, for higher terms, representations up to homotopy. And uh, this is everything that I wanted to say, so thank you very much. <laughs>